discovered by the Vikings over a thousand years ago. And of course, maybe the Native Americans tens of thousands of years before that. <laughs> and where 90% of all of the nation's toothpicks are produced. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> It's also the only U.S. state with a single syllable name, and it also yields 90% of the country's lobster. <laughs> You're listening to Crib Money, episode number 447, and today we're sharing the most affordable, LGBTQ plus friendly city to live in in Maine. Now, on with the show. The mission of Queer Money is to financially empower the LGBTQ plus community. Join us in thanking Capital One for supporting that mission. Welcome back, folks. We are continuing our series about the most affordable LGBTQ plus friendly cities all around the country, looking at each state on a specific episode. If you are watching on YouTube, you can catch the whole series by clicking up there. If you are listening, you can click the link in your podcast player to catch the whole series. Last week, we visited Maryland. YouTube viewers can watch that particular episode by clicking right here. Or if you're listening, you can click click the link in your podcast player. We want to share some more podcast love. We love the fact that many of you are reaching out and commenting and giving us ratings and reviews. On episode 426, on how we were thinking about our saving strategy, Toya G said, thanks for sharing. I suck at savings. <laughs> I'm sure you're not the only not one. <laughs> right? But they went on to say, I'm thinking of opening an account with Capital One. And we would definitely suggest that you do that, Toya. If you are inclined, feel free to give Queer Money a rating or review on your favorite podcast player or on the show notes of this particular episode. And did you know, if you are listening on Spotify, you can actually comment on an individual episode. We just found that out ourselves a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> now let's talk about Maine. Let's get the dirty stuff out of the way. <laughs> and the dirty what, stuff what? is uh, Maine. Didn't have a single city that got a 100 on HRC's Municipal Equality Index. Pretty surprising. Yeah. We were surprised by this because we uh, thought that Maine was, uh, for the most part, a very welcoming and uh, more liberal place to be. So who are, is our runner-up, John? Our runner-up for Maine is Bangor. Well, why? It got a 70 on the Human Rights Campaign's Municipal Equality Index. Home values come in at $257,000 per property, which is the lowest for Maine. Rent comes in at $1,466 for a two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment. That comes in at number three for Maine. Cost of living is 84% of the national average, which is the second lowest for Maine. Average income is $59,000 per year, which is in the middle, and median income is $45,000 per year, which is also in the middle for Maine. Tired of all the credit card offers you get from your current credit scoring app? Download CreditWise by Capital One today to avoid them. So David, who is the winner? Winner, winner, chicken dinner goes to Portland. No, not Portland, Oregon, Portland, Maine. It is kind of There's interesting. More than one Portland. Right. And they're each on uh, the upper northwest and northeast points of the country. So why Portland? Well, it did get the highest score on the Municipal Equality Index of 96. Great job there. Its home values, though, come in at $520,000. That is well above the national average yeah. and is Ouch. second highest in Maine. Rents come in at $2,349 a month for a two-bedroom, two-bathroom. Again, also out. second highest in Maine, <laughs> right? Cost of living, 111.9% of the national average, the second highest in Maine. But balancing it out, average incomes, $72,000, the second highest in Maine. And finally, median incomes, $59,000. You guessed it, <laughs> second highest in Maine. <laughs> The curious thing about Portland, the metro area, is that Portland met metro area is basically made up of three municipalities. You have Portland, South Portland, and Scarborough. So why not Scarborough or South Portland? South Portland did come in at a very close third. It got a 71 on the MEI, uh, but it that is one of the things that kept it from being in the top two. Scarborough is just really expensive. <laughs> it's the number one most expensive for rents, housing, the cost of living, 
it also has the highest average and median incomes, but it still didn't reach that top those top two spots for us. Still expensive. So some fun or great things about Portland, Maine. Uh, it is the biggest city in Maine and is a seaside town. So that makes it very picturesque and enjoyable. Downtown, Old Port and West End are the more neighborhoodish like areas in Portland. But as I understand it, uh, the LGBTQ plus community is spread spread throughout the whole area of Portland. Pride, known as Portland Pride, is typically the middle of June and lands smack dab on June 15th in 2024. Portland, also known as, also hosts the Portland Queer Film Festival, Gay Skate, and the Varsity Gay League that plays all sorts of sports all year long, all with a rainbow influence. And then also check out the Q Center and Rainbow Business Professionals for support, services, and networking. With all that, congratulations, Bangor and Portland. Financial independence with a checking and savings account that doesn't nickel and dime you with fees. Get a Capital One 360 checking or a 360 performance savings account at Capital One today. Thanks again for listening. On next Thursday's Queer Money bonus episode, we are covering the most affordable, most gay-friendly city in the state of Louisiana. If you'd like to see the results from all the cities in each state that we're analyzing, please go to queermoneypodcast.com forward slash cities or click the link in your podcast player if you're listening or click the link right here if you're watching on YouTube. Thank you and have an amazing weekend.